Chris, it's good to see you, buddy. Yeah, man, good to see you. How are you? You, how are? <laughs> I'm good. Nobody cares about me right now, though. But I appreciate that because that's the kind of guy you are. I do. Thank you. How are you? Yeah, I'm I'm doing just great. Yeah. How's everything been? Just generally, because I haven't spoke to you in a while. Like, you, what are you doing now? Are you balancing right now? Or are you working? What does that even mean? You well, I mean, because you, you work more than anybody known to man, I think so. Uh, you know, the work-life balance thing is a, is a tough thing for anybody in this industry. I Have you mastered it? No. Have I, you? Oh, no. <laughs> and I was going to ask you, because you and Morgan have been married a long time. I have had to learn to taper off of working all the time. Like, I have yeah. to listen. It's hard for me to listen because I, ha I didn't get married until I was 39. Yeah. So we've been married a couple years Maybe three, two years, two, almost two years now. You need to know how long. I know, boy. Married. When I said that, I was like, is there a way we can edit this? We're live. Yeah. So, but I've had to learn to value her time. And sometimes that's by taking sure. less away from me working. Yeah. Is that, how do you find balance or at least chase balance in your life? Well, you just do everything you can to make that happen. You know, uh, and sometimes that means saying no to things. And that's hard in this industry where you can get used to, you know, you want to do that? Sure. Yes. Opportunity? Yes. But you have to, uh, you know, try to make conscious choices to, to choose uh, living sometimes over um, career or money or any of those things. Living. That's the key, that. maybe. Yeah. Maybe it's living. Uh, for with me, I didn't get to do a lot of cool stuff until the last couple of years. And I was saying yes to everything yeah. because I just wanted to make it. I just wanted to, yes, can I please do this? Yes, yes, yes. And I'm finally now getting to say no to things, but I have this sort of imposter syndrome where if I feel like if I say no to too much, I'll never get asked to do anything again. Absolutely, yeah. Wait, do you understand that? Oh, 100%. You understand that? Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. How so? You're the greatest. I, well, I appreciate you saying that, but, you know, I don't think, um, you know, you might think that or somebody else might think that, but, I, you know, I don't feel that way. I, I feel very much like a working musician who... Is trying to get uh, keep his gig, you know. Yeah, even you. Yeah, I think that gives a lot of people hope because they're going well. If Chris Stapleton, who we all feel like, like you're like the greatest vocalist, you're a phenomenal songwriter, love to hear you live, and even you're like, you know, I don't even know about me sometimes. Well, but I want to be better. You want to be better. Everybody wants to be better at their job. Or there's always there's always something else. You know, that's the other thing. I think when you have the the problem with the work life balance thing is. Um, no matter what you achieve or no matter what you do, there's a certain personality type, and I'm, I'm one of them, and Same. I'm guessing maybe you're one of them too, that yeah. there's like, well, but there's, then there's this next thing. There's always a next thing. There's always the next thing. It's a, it's, there's never an end for that, that personality. And so you have to learn to flip that switch and, you know, be present a little bit. And it's hard. Being present is hard and enjoying moments, you know. Sometimes you're moving through the moments so fast that uh, – you're not even looking around and going, hey, this is this is pretty killer what's going on right now. It's, it's beautiful, you know. My wife has been a big part of me being forced to do that. But then once I do it a couple of times, I'm like, oh, it's pretty cool to actually acknowledge how cool we have it, how good we have it. My thing has always been, I can't wait. I want to host one of the award shows. And tonight we're going to be at the ACMs. I'm not hosting, but I'm like Garth and Dolly sidekick. I think that should happen. I'll, I'll vote for that. Well, thanks. I mean, yeah. who knows? That they, they won't let me, but I'm very happy. I'm at the, I'm part of the, I'm part of the ACM tonight, everybody. Okay. <laughs> this is not an ACM thing, but I, that's the next thing. Like, it's hard for me to enjoy a lot of the stuff because I'm like, I do so much comedy. I do so much, like I would be perfect for that job, but they, and, but it's all I can focus on. So when all these other good things are happening, I'm still like, yeah, but I still haven't been able to do this. Do you have one of those? What's the dream for you? Uh, the work, work life balance is the dream. That's the dream, and to find that out and, and figure that out, um, you know, and be present for my children. Well, I, have, I have five children, so um, I think about them a lot. And the oldest is 14 and the youngest is four. And, uh, you know, you miss some stuff. Like you miss a, a baseball game or you miss a, a soccer game, whatever. Um, and when you miss those things, you're like, oh, man, what am I doing? You know, do I need to, this thing that I'm doing? And sometimes those things are just scheduling things and, you didn't know that was going to happen. We and we make real conscious efforts to, you know, make things sacred, as you have to do in order to, to get to those things. But, um, you know, I've done so many things that I, I um, never dreamed of, that became a dream that, you know, never dreamed of. 
And so I'm well beyond having a dream in that way, you know, like kind of living in a space where um, it's a perpetual dream. And so it's hard for me to <laughs> look at something else and go, oh, but I need to do that, you know. Uh, and, and I'm not trying to, maybe that's cocky sounding or something. I don't, I don't think it's cocky at all. I think it's true. And you have to have confidence to even be able to like put our foot in the water, honestly. Yeah. I mean, and, and I'm, do you think you have confidence? In some spaces, sure. Yeah, I mean, that's what yeah. I was going to say too. In some, I'm terrible. I'm so yeah. insecure. Yeah. Well, I th- and that's part of the other things that makes you always push into, you know, is you're, you're trying to be better, trying to do something better, bigger than yourself, maybe even. Do you think that you try to get better because of your want to achieve or your fear of not achieving? Probably a little bit of both. I mean, I think that both would be fair. Um, I don't know. I, I mean, I don't really, I, I don't, especially now that I'm older, I don't, I don't have as much of a fear of failure because that just that's how you learn things. You can't learn anything without failing at something. Um, but I certainly like, I mean, I, and who doesn't, I don't think, but maybe there's somebody that doesn't like, you know, achieving things. It, it feels good. Everybody likes to win. Yeah. And it's not necessarily competitive to competitive with anybody other than myself for me but um yeah i i do like those things i I grew up playing sports and things like that so some of that's kind of you know hardwired into me but um i don't know how do you get out your competition bug if not in music because i love to compete same thing grew up playing sports i just i'm so competitive so i have different things that i do if it's a you know my buddies and i are in a league we play madden or i play golf I love to compete. It doesn't matter what it is. I just need to beat somebody at something. Mm, I, you know, I, I've kind of reached a space where I, I don't feel like I'm trying to beat anybody at anything. I'm just trying to. You're healthy. Okay, we to, already to, here. To move. <laughs> You're a healthy person. I'm not a healthy person, Chris. <laughs> well, I mean, if we wouldn't play something, I would want to beat you. Just, <laughs> let, let's, be, let's be, you know, real clear about that. But um, when I was a teenager where I might have thrown a golf club, I, you know, maybe I'd be like, oh, well, I, I shanked that one in the woods. I'll hit another one. It's fine. Your single now is Joy in My Life, John Fogarty. I'm a massive John Fogarty fan. One of the first concerts I ever went to was John Fogarty. I mean, Good for you. It, <laughs> yeah, I was like fifth, 14, 15. Nice. I saw Diamond Rio. I saw Peter Frampton. I saw John Fogarty. On one show? No, I oh. wish. That would have been a heck of a festival. <laughs> I was like, but like all of the like, like six months of my first concerts ever. And John Fogarty, I love CCR. I yeah. can do the whole catalog, yeah. uh, even as a solo artist. Even when I think about baseball, even like center field. It's you know? great. So, and, so Joy in My Life, like that's John Fogarty's song, right? It is. Because I've heard him, I've heard his live version yeah. as well. Why would you, why did you pick that song of the great songs that you It's pick? a record of his that I had when that record came out. Is uh, maybe the 90s. Um, and I, I don't know if that song is known as well uh, as some of, certainly he has a really deep catalog, but I just always loved that song, and I, I would play that. You know, like a lot of songs that I cut that are covers, it's just some song that I love, you know, and I think it's cool, and it's fun to sing, and I love the sentiment of it. And um, maybe, not maybe, I'm, I'm sure that I never would have written it that way or even thought of it that way. And so it's, it's, uh, it's neat to find songs that feel uh, like they can be personal, but they're – they had, didn't come from you at all. Mm-hmm. You know, so. We're going to play it now. We're going to come back with Chris, which, by the way, Chris tonight, ACM Awards, up for, I mean, he's, he's the man. But Entertainer of the Year is the one I'm talking about here. You got three total nominations, but I do the the VO for Entertainer of the Year. I gave your name a little extra buzz. Don't worry. Oh, yeah. Everybody yeah. else, I was like, mm, Morgan Wallen, Randall Lambert, <laughs> Chris Stapleton. <laughs> so when you hear that, you know. I, I hear that when you do that, it makes the voting go differently. Absolutely, yeah. even though there's no chance because they've already happened. But right. still, ACM's tonight on Amazon Prime. I hope you watch. You don't even need a subscription to watch. You can wa- go check it out. I'll be there. I'm doing backstage with Bobby Bones during the show. Garth and Dolly are hosting. Chris Stapleton's up for Entertainer of the Year. He's got more nominations than that, but he's also here today. Now, Chris, you ever been? when's the last time you were nervous? Let me ask you that. When's the last time for performance? For performance? For performance, because I can't see you get nervous. Super Bowl. Oh. Really? Yeah. Is it because... It's a Super Bowl? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's a Super Bowl, you know. It's just, and it's the anthem. You know, that's a hard song, and it's uh, it's one that if you mess it up, 
uh, you are immortalized, messing it up forever. And if you do do well, you 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 did good there too. But the main goal with the anthem is don't mess up the words and don't mess up the melody. Did you <laughs> have much. a conversation on if you listen? We all love America. Let's get that straight. Do you have a conversation? Was do I do I want to go sing the national anthem at the Super Bowl? Because if you you're right, if you nail it, everybody's like, good job. Let's get the game. But if you don't, it's remembered forever. Uh, yes. Well, here's another one of those things we're talking about, about the dream things. People would ask me to do the anthem for, for various other things. I'd be like, no, I'll I'll just wait on the Super Bowl, mm. thinking you know like they're not going to call me for the Super Bowl. So, but then they call you for the Super Bowl, and you're like, well, I I said I would do that if if they call me for that. So, I. I went and did it, and now I'm retired from the anthem. So, whenever you perform it, you know they they can bet on how long it goes. Did you ever? Did you know how long yours was going to be just from practice? I again? want a lot of money. Yeah. No, <laughs> <laughs> Some guy named Chris ba- yeah, Bapleton yeah, yeah. won ten million dollars. <laughs> yes. Did you Did you judge it for yourself? Did I judge? Did it you for even myself? think about it? Like, did you time it yourself, even knowing that was a thing? I, I did. Yeah, good. I, I I did after people started asking me like. Like, I didn't know it was a thing, right. first of all. I never didn't know you could bet on how long the anthem was. So I was like, and once I learned that, I was like, man, I know how long the anthem is. That's crazy. But but I haven't really told anybody. I didn't tell anybody. So there's still some honor there. I didn't. All I know is I never got a message saying, that, hey, it's 242. Because if it would have, <laughs> I'd have been killing. Is it when you sing the anthem with a guitar, is it easier to stay same pitch because you have the you can hear the note and you know because some people go and they blow that thing yeah i, I mean or does I, it not matter it's a non-issue for me I mean, it might be for somebody else yeah. i don't know I, it's i can only judge it for me do you have perfect pitch no can you hear perfect pitch uh, i mean perfect pitch means that i could i could hear you hit and your, match it and i could tell you well i could tell you what that note was i can't do that that's perfect pitch. Like uh, some other Charlie Puth has perfect pitch. But could you guess pretty good? No. no okay. Not even <laughs> close. Not even close. I don't even know the names of all the notes on a guitar. You know, so I can't tell you what I'm playing most of the time. What's the best concert you've ever been to? The best concert I've ever been to. Um, I've been to some good ones. Um, Paul McCartney, the Eagles, Hell Freezes Over tour, uh, the Vince Gill tour where you had the big band. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It's hard to pick. There's a lot of good ones. But, but one. But one? You only go to one, but you get to relive it. I it's like relive Chris, it? Yeah, you get to relive I, a show was, that you've been to. Man, if I was reliving, I'd probably go. And part of this is just the era of my life. It is. It's, it's the Eagles Hell Freezes Over Tour. You know, fourth row, Charleston, West Virginia. Me and my brother. I spent all my money I had to get these, these tickets, you know. And they played for four hours. And it was, they did all their solo stuff. Plus all the Eagle stuff. So you got everything that you wanted out of that show. And it was it was an immaculate show. Did you ever it watch was, their documentary? I have not. It's like three and a half. It was awesome. It was that. It was them getting back together and doing that tour. You see the Tom Petty documentary by any chance? It's like seven hours, eight I, hours long. I haven't. I, oh, it's so I've, good. I've watched about half of the Beatles. The one on Apple? Yeah. I've watched about half of that. I haven't gone through. I, I just, I get um, distracted a lot. What do you think about the Apple one? Because I, I see why everybody thought it was so awesome, but I also couldn't sit for long periods because you're just watching them live. You know, it's voyeurism. You know, you were sure. As a songwriter, it's fascinating to watch some of these things be created and realize that um, a lot of the processes are not too different than what the rest of us try to do. They just happen to be the Beatles. <laughs> yeah. You know, like they're sitting there dinking around on something, thinking they're not doing anything, and then it's, you know, some classic Beatles song that, Everybody knows. And you're the, like, oh, yeah, there's one part where Paul is just like, Jojo was a man who, mm, jo- Jojo was a man who, and you're hearing him. Yeah, you hear him make it back. up. You hear like the beginning start parts of Get Back that we all know now we've heard 10 million times, but it's just him like dinking around figuring it out. Right, it's incredible. That's an incredible thing to have on film. Are you recording a lot of your life so we can do one of these about you? No. No. Nobody. You don't have somebody that's recording a bunch of stuff that's not getting out on social media, but one day when it's time for Stapleton, uncut, unedited, midnight version. No, I'm pretty I'm pretty private. I mean, there, we film shows and stuff like that. but You don't want a documentary about your life? Not really, no. I do. Yeah, well, <laughs> there's one. <laughs> Did you think, let's go uh, 20 years ago. 
Did you have dreams that equaled to where you are now? No. No. Dreams. I'm, no. No, because I, you know, I, I try to work very much in the space and the doors that feel like they're open. Not necessarily like, I guess it's good to have goals. Like, like, But my goals were always, I'm a songwriter. I want to keep this job. You know, I'm, I'm touring. I don't want to lose money. You know, like those are those are the kinds of things that uh, there was never like a, hey, I want to be uh, getting interviewed on the radio, talking about being nominated for a bunch of awards. It doesn't, not a not was not a not a thing. Really. You would have liked it though. It just was. It was just so out of the realm of what you thought was a possibility. Well, you know, I'm not. Well, it just didn't seem um, – some of those things don't seem uh, achievable or practical. Right. And they're not without a whole lot of luck. You know. If we go back to that performance with you and JT where I think America was introduced to you, was the next few days and week after that, was it just bonkers for it was you? super bonkers. Yeah. We went from – you know, the next thing that we had after, after that, uh, we had like a West Coast run, which we'd never played really on the West Coast at all. And we were playing places that held maybe 800 people that were half sold, you know, because nobody knew who, knew who we were out there. And, you know, those tickets were gone, and, and then pretty soon we were booking things. We didn't know how, uh, you know, deep the river was all of a sudden. And so there was a lot of guessing about what size venue we could play for the next year or so. And then... In the venues that we're in. Did you feel like that could be fleeting? I, I still do. Mm. Yeah. But not. But you can't. <laughs> I mean, I get it because I feel the same way. People say, You're, if you got fired today, you'd be fine. And I'm like, I don't know. So I completely understand, but I'm saying this from my perspective. Like, there's no chance. It's fleeting now. But you did feel like maybe this is a, just a blip, so I need to hold on as long as I can? Well, yeah. I mean, working musician mentality kicks in. You're like, all right, sun's shining. Let's make some hay. Let's, let's do what we can do. And you and you and you run pretty hard in those moments, as hard as you can. Was it ever overwhelming? No, it was exciting. I mean, it, it, it was exhausting, but it was exciting, you know, and and just uh, surreal and light, and still is on a lot of nights, you know. Can you go to dinner in a public place? I can. Can you go to dinner in a public place where people don't recognize you or want to pay for your bill or try to get a picture? Sometimes. Is that hard? I mean, it, that that kind of adjustment was hard. That was that was the hardest part initially, and it, and it's probably, um, and now it's just it's that's just what my life is, you know. And I'm sure that it's, it's what your life is, and totally the same. We're the same fame. Yeah, good. Pretty point. much. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you have to deal with, man. You, you're it gets you're weird on sometimes. TV and stuff, it gets you know, weird like, sometimes, but uh, you're you're very. I mean, you're such a great songwriter and singer, and on top of that, your beard is very distinct. Sure. Where my glasses is pretty distinct. Yeah. Your beard. So I would think, like, I got I got pulled over the other day. I had a phone up to my ear. Should you can't do that, by the way. You can't hold a phone up to your ear. You get a ticket. I wasn't speeding. Got a phone up to my ear. Cough what if it's pulls, not. What if you're not talking to anybody? Doesn't matter. I can't have phone to your ear. Can't even you, hold. You can can't, be holding. Nope. It. You can't hold it what, up. To what is a toy phone? Chris, I don't have the answers, but that'd be hilarious. You drive by <laughs> yeah. a cop with a toy phone just to see. Yeah, yeah. Got gotcha. you. That's Smart funny. <laughs> Okay, man, that's funny just right checking. there. Yeah, just checking. Man. I got so I got pulled over. It does that ever happen? And somebody like a cop is like, "Oh, Chris Stapleton, look at that. We'll let you go. I know you just robbed the bank, but go ahead and go free. You're Chris Stapleton." Uh, I, I've I've gotten you know because I, my whole life because I look like I do. I look like I need a ticket. <laughs> you know, the, I'll get caught for like a rolling stop on a stop sign or something, and it doesn't happen as much anymore, but. Anytime I used to get pulled, I just knew I was getting a ticket. There were no warnings, nothing. They would find everything they could find, and, <laughs> and I would get those because I think in their heart they knew that because I looked like I look, it, it was I, even though they didn't catch me for something that I've done, I did something. You know, I felt like that a lot. But but no, I, I actually have gotten off with a with a warning uh, in the last two or three years. They say, Chris, please sing to me. You'd like a warning. <laughs> and he's like, all right. I need a warning. Here you go, Chris. That's it. I saw a video of you. I don't know how long it was. Were you at a Tyler Perry show and they were like, made you get up and sing? Is that real? 
Yeah, that's real. How long ago is that? That's been a minute. It has? Uh, yeah. I don't know. It's pre-pandemic, so. I, I wondered, how did the, how did a microphone get to you? How did they know it was you? Well, I was coming to the show, and we were going to, you know, a bunch of folks that I work with, we, we wanted to go see the show, because at the time, that was like the last one he was going to do, you know. And uh, he knew that I was there, going to be there, and he's like, hey. so before the show, he's like, hey, man, can I just hand you a microphone? Can we break out of the show for a minute, and we'll just do that thing? I was like, I mean, I guess so. Let's let's go. And so that's what we did. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it was super cool. Is it cool that people that are also uber talented think you're uber talented? Um, because that's what that is. Certainly, it feels validating, you know. Um, and uh, if you want to say it's cool, yeah, I think. It, I mean, I, yeah, I think that's cool. You're on the road. We were talking about this. If we look through your tour dates here: All American Road Show, uh, ChrisStapleton.com. And March all the way through, it looks like the end of October. Do you still enjoy being that hour and a half on stage? We usually do two hours, but yeah. Two uh, hours on Do you still yeah. enjoy that? Yeah. I mean, I mean certainly, the, I mean, every night is a new uh, animal, you know, and, and if you, you know, if you're feeling out of the weather or it's super hot or super cold, th those are things, you know, if you're playing outside, those are things that, are kind of wild cards that you know, but it is, as long as you can get to the the best version of uh, how something can sound on stage, and you really can find that that musicianship thing with all the guys and on stage and get in the groove, or something. Yeah, that's that's really something to enjoy because then you see this thing start happening with the circle of the fans and everybody's. You send something out, and the energy comes back at you, and then you get to. Send that energy back out, and it, and it elevates what you do. You can't, I don't know, you can't do that without people coming to watch you, you know. Three more questions. If you're, we'll say writer's block, writer's slow, writer's, and you're not there, you can't get there, what can you do in order to kind of find that, that spark? Go do something else. Just get away completely? Yeah, just stop. If it's not happening, just stop. Go do something else. And, you know, I've I've had rare occasions where I've dedicated time to go do something like that 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 happens. But I've certainly had it happen. That said, you know, I've had writing appointments with people when I was a songwriter, and we'd be banging around on trying to beat our heads against a wall for two hours and then could look at each other and just go, hey, let's just go to lunch. And and you do that, and that's the day. And that's, that's songwriting and being creative, too. Like some days – you're not going to have it, but if you, you know, can have enough presence of mind to just walk away. Is that where Salisbury Steak was written? That song? That's my favorite song of your Salisbury Steak. Was it at lunch? I have no idea yeah, what you're I'm talking just, about. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so, but now listen, I, I could have written a song like that in my 20s. I, I don't remember a lot. Uh, I just, you know. <laughs> so, okay, you're on the road. You're playing these shows. You play these songs that you've either written or that you've you've picked, like the – Fogarty song, and we go back to some of the great covers that you put on your records. Do you have a? This is such a cliche question, but I love asking. Do you have a favorite song right now that you play? A favorite song? Yeah. What do you like playing the most? Like um, you see it coming up in the set list, you're like, man, this is what I'm looking forward to. Uh, I look forward to playing. I was wrong a lot, just because you know I get to we extend it and play like a bunch of guitar on the end. <laughs> and so, as a singer who likes to play guitar. I, you know, uh, I like to do that. So. John Mayer plays with Dead and Company, right? So mm -hmm. he goes, would you ever, not with Grateful Dead, Dead and Company, but is that intriguing, exciting to you if somebody was like, hey, some famous band like the Eagles or something, like, hey, would you play guitar for us for three shows, but only guitar where you don't have to sing? Yes. Would that be fun? Oh, yeah. I, and that's my, those are my favorite calls sometimes when people call me to, just to come play guitar on something because, you know, I'm, I secretly really love that. You know, not secretly. I'm I'm publicly saying right here. My favorite thing is to get a call to not sing. You know, that's weird. Or 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 just to write with somebody for something they're doing, I, and not because the, it has to be a duet. Those are the things that. Mm. Um, so not to write for you to sing on, but just they just want your your writing perspective ability. Yeah, I love to do that because it allows you. There's so much more. Um, I'm trying to get in somebody else's thing and, and help them get to whatever they're looking for in, in my own way. And that's a really um, f 
fun, creative space to be in for me. Because I don't do that all the time. Well, I can invite you over not to sing. That's pretty easy. Hey, you want yeah. to man? Just don't sing. <laughs> yeah. Just hang out. Yeah. Uh, Chris Stapleton tonight. You guys watch the ACMs, please. It is on Amazon Prime. Are you playing tonight? No. It's, you're not. No. And that's why you're going, because they were like, Chris wants you to come, but don't play. That's what I heard. They, yep. want, they wanted you not they to. They said, please never play And again. then you were like, my favorite call is not to play, so I'm going to be there. That's well, right. we don't really, I mean, we're at the end of an album cycle. We, we've, there wasn't much reason for us to play, so we just pump the brakes and we'll show up and be there, be present. But if we're at the end of one, is it almost a rebirth of another album cycle? Could be. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. Okay. There he is, Chris Stapleton. He just said it here. He's got a brand new album coming out called Salisbury Steak. <laughs> right, everybody? We talking about that? It was untitled until was. now. But, yeah. <laughs> All right. You guys follow Chris at Chris Stapleton. Chris, you know, I love you, man. Just as a dude, just as you. obviously your music is uh, fantastic. But you guys go see Chris. The, the show's with George Strait. That's That's got to be crazy. That's got to be crazy. It's insane, man. I, 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 we had played a few of those kind of shows before, and I, and I just bugged George to do some more because <laughs> it's fun. It's a, it's a great bill to be on. It's George Strait, man. It's George Strait, man. You know? That's right. All right, there he is. ACMs tonight, Amazon Prime. Clap your hands for Chris Stapleton, everybody. Yeah.